successful on all question types. So this is with me, Joseph from Noteful.com. Super excited to be with you. So we're going to jump right in. You know, I'm eager to make sure to help you throughout this class. And so you're going to see what we're going to talk about as we jump into the overview. So as usual, I'm excited to make sure that by the end of this class, you have more ability than you do now. Something is clear. You can do something better so that right after this class, when you practice or study, things make a little bit more sense. And probably after I get this outline done, I'm going to make sure that we connect as a group. I see people coming in. Hello to everybody. So we have Bita here. Hello, Bita. Welcome. Excited that you're here. We're studying together. All my great students Saturday morning. So the first thing that we're going to do in this class after we get into the little intro discussion that we're having now is center ourselves for class as usual with our character, Miss uh, Froggy, just to make sure that we understand stress management for the exam so that we can do well. Then we're going to do a student survey. So always fun to see uh, where our classmates are, like you submit your information, others do too, where you say, have you taken the TOEFL before? Are you new to Noteful? What is your dream score for the listening section? And you know, do you have plans to take the TOEFL soon? So we kind of know where everybody are, uh, where everybody is, and it helps me. So I see the hellos coming in, which is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and say hello also to Sahar. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Gina, hello. Welcome once again to all my students. We're finishing up our two-week break between our online class series. So for many of you, this is like a warm-up before we get started on Monday with our six weeks of classes for the TOEFL. But I'll talk to you about that at the end of this class. For those of you who want and need more help, Estefani, welcome. Human, great as always to have you working hard. Yasmani, hello, welcome. Good morning from New York to you. I know we have students from all over. Marta, hello. Rohit, Lotaro, hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Welcome to you. Anna Marie, Joan, Og, hope I'm pronouncing, or Oge. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Apologies if not. Bella, welcome. And Bella reminds me that we have, you know, our Facebook group for students who are in our class series. So I'll talk about that at the end so you can find study partners. So just to give you a sense that at the end, I'll talk about how you can connect with other classmates so that you can work together. And so always fun. Appreciate your patience, everybody. As we say hello, give the class good energy. Thumbs up to you, everybody, for being here on time and Saturday morning, at least uh, my Saturday morning. So, Regard, hello to you. Happy Saturday. Julieta, hello. Mina, Ramazan, Gloria, Roya Maliv, welcome. And I hope you like and feel comfortable with me saying hello to everybody. Our classes are great, and I feel like that's fun. You know, if I attended a live class, said hello, got my name read, it would feel cool. Like, oh, this is live. This is connected, right? Because sometimes it's hard to tell what's real and what's not real. At least we know we're really live now. So Rahula, hello to you. Lilia, oh, cheers from Sacramento. So you're three hours earlier. Yeah, 7 a.m. Early bird. Great. We're here at 10 a.m. in New York. Renuka. Ceylon, hello in Turkey, right? Halfway across the world. Very cool that you're joining us. Reza, hello to you in Canada. So our neighbors up north, we're not too far. And Sumathi, hello. So super nice and fun to connect with all of you. And so it's, that's why the student survey is kind of fun. We see where we are and who we are as a group. Then I'm going to go into a quick TOEFL listening overview. In every class we have, we always have new students new to Noteful, new to the TOEFL, and we always have students who are uh, Noteful professionals, TOEFL professionals. You've taken the TOEFL several times, you've taken Noteful courses, so we're going to make sure that's quick and clean, 
so everybody is caught up. Then I'm going to review all the question types that you can expect on your TOEFL listening. It's going to be really nice so you know, okay, this is what's going to happen. These are the kind of questions. And then we're going to do a unique practice. And my goal is not to make this practice because this is a one-hour class that is like a complete exact TOEFL lecture. I do that in our online courses. But here I wanted to fit in an hour uh, a mini lecture that I made up to start challenging you with the different question types and to start to really understand it's not just about do you understand the lecture but do you understand what the question is asking like the strategy and the actual way of listening the way of hearing information that is going to help us to score higher by having an easier time understanding what questions are asking and how to ask answer them and then number six, next steps to conquer the TOEFL together. So those of you who really enjoy the class and want to work together, I'm going to talk about our six-week course that we've redesigned, online classes and self-study material to help you for all parts of the TOEFL. So I hope you're excited. I hope you're excited. Let's see here. And hello from Tajikistan. And I, I believe that's Russian. I apologize if it's not but I cannot read that, so I should study that. But hello to you. I'm happy you're here. Amar Zaya, welcome. Reza, super excited. You're part of our ultra-fast training. So at the end of the course, I'll talk about the different prep courses we have, depending on when you take the TOEFL. You have eight days to your home edition. Happy you're here. Whew, take a deep breath. You can do it. We're going to learn some good stuff today. Kadosh, good morning. And our Marzaya, Mongolia, also halfway across the world. So we're getting after, you know, Turkey, Middle East, our other student who said from that area, Mongolia, it's like we might be getting closer or farther. Cool. And hello. I also cannot read Arabic, unfortunately, but maybe I should study that as well. I should do the basics of every alphabet. Joan, new to the TOEFL from Palestine. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're safe and everything is good. All right, very nice. So, appreciate that you enjoy our lessons. Let's now move into centering ourselves. So, let me tell you a little story behind Froggy here. We're all familiar with Froggy, a little meditative frog, kind of fun to look at. That's a really important part of the TOEFL. I take the TOEFL regularly. I've already taken the new TOEFL three times, scored perfect in all sections. I plan on taking it because every time the TOEFL changes, and this is one of the most significant changes that occurred in July in 2023, it takes time to settle. And all these little things I notice are changing. So because the exam is structured to be two hours nonstop, I cannot express in my experience, and I know for everyone who's taken the TOEFL, how important it is to manage your energy, your focus, and your stress levels. That's going to be a big factor. I say regularly, if I could just give you a magic pill, but instead I'm going to give you a strategy to improve your focus and decrease your stress, that's a guaranteed extra two, maybe four points. Guaranteed. So Froggy here is pretty powerful because the idea is that we have three parts, and these three parts we train every hour of class and you can use in a moment on the TOEFL and I do this regularly in between sections right the TOEFL has reading listening speaking and writing and we're going to concentrate on listening today with a unique mini lecture just to train question types so what you want to do as you do the class or as you take the TOEFL when you start to see that pressure come or when you start to maybe get stressed, this lecture's hard, this reading is hard, I just messed up in the speaking, I'm really exhausted for the writing, I have to go to the bathroom, they won't let me go. All these things are kind of stimulating you. Three parts, right? Number one, we close our eyes, just like Froggy here. Number two, a deep, slow breath, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Quick physical experience to say, okay, it's okay. No big deal. And number three, very important, a positive statement to help you, to guide you in whatever situation, which may be, I, I can do it. 
I'm just going to do my best. I'm going to focus the best I can. That question is over. I'm going to concentrate on this. It really helps. So what we do for class is we do this for one minute. And remember, everybody, you are positive energy. She's smiling. You're going to take the TOEFL, right? Human, Rohi, everybody, you're all taking the TOEFL. So you want to think to yourself, wow, I'm going to take it and I want to do well. So in this minute, I want you to close your eyes, deep, slow breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, and just think to yourself, I'm preparing to take my exam. This is going to help me directly with my exam. So I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to be better than I was so I can pass my next TOEFL. So we really want to get that positive energy and then that makes the class better. So one minute to do that as a group, eyes closed, deep breathing, positive thinking. Let's all do that together, starting now. And that's our minute, everybody. Hope you centered yourself and feel good. A couple of hellos for students that came in. Siham, welcome. Happy you're here, right? I love the familiar names. Andy, welcome. Excited for the gold course on Monday. I'll be talking about that at the end. Super happy you're here. Very good warm up. Hope you're doing your homework. Every You and everyone already enrolled in the upcoming course. Aubin, welcome from Benin. Or I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It might be Benin. But Benin, a country in West Africa. Really cool to have you here. Happy you're ready. Salam from Afghanistan. Very cool to have you here as well. Welcome. Let's see here. Carl, we're going to talk about your scores. You get a 15 in the listening. And yeah, today we're not going to talk about so much complicated lectures, note taking. We're going to talk about question types because you know there are many things to help you for the TOEFL listening. So don't worry, we're going to help you and everyone get a higher score. Hamza, welcome. Gigi, welcome. Rita, once more, welcome. Happy that you're here. Maha, good morning. And Gigi, Gigi from Venezuela, so down south, South America. Very cool. Happy that you're here. Raja Sekar, welcome and hello to you. And Mayor, Mayor. So a lot of hellos, it's what I really like to do, especially for the classes, because as I said, it just gives us good energy, it gives me good energy. So next, let's learn about each other. So I have four questions for you for today to help me with the class and to connect. Number one, have you taken the TOEFL before? That'll help me. Number two, have you studied a Noteful course before? So just to know how familiar you are with us, we I'm Joseph from Noteful. When do you plan to take your TOEFL? And what are you taking your TOEFL for? Always great to know. So here's an example answer. You just, you know, one, no, two, no, three, middle of April for your physics PhD. Another example, one, yes, two, yes, three, no date yet right? You're just studying. You're not ready for it yet for pharmacy. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to see how many come in. I think I'll give us two minutes to do this. It'll be fun. Then I can see, and that'll help me to guide the class in a way that's helpful for all. So let's go ahead, answer this now, text it in the comments section. Thumbs up to you and everybody. Happy that you're here. I'm eager to see our group. So two minutes to answer that. 
into the comments, whether you're in YouTube or Facebook. If you have, if you're on the LinkedIn feed, uh, the comments don't come in automatically. That's the only downside. So keep, if I don't say your name or read your information, it's because I can't see it on our platform. So go ahead, send those in. So Joan, no, yes, in two months, pharmacy, great to know. Gloria, yes, yes, April teaching certification, excellent. Estefani, yes, taking the TOEFL, no noteful course, no date yet. Pharmacy, good, so you're studying hard, you're not thinking about the schedule yet, which is good. You want to be ready first before you start thinking of scheduling. Carl, yes, taking the TOEFL, no noteful course, March 23rd for your TOEFL, and use this for accounting, right? Probably getting your master's degree, I imagine, maybe bachelor's. Lotaro, no TOEFL, no noteful, don't know to be a nurse, so perfect. I love it when we get students as well who are really fresh, so it can get a good perspective and some good training, I hope. Marta, no noteful before no TOEFL, no noteful course, middle of April, university, so likely graduate school or maybe undergrad. And I'm going to start going through these a little bit faster just to see so everyone can kind of see on the screen. We get our we get ourselves connected. So I won't be saying names. I'll just be kind of going through things little by little. Or I may be saying names. Kashifa, yes, yes, two weeks pharmacy. Nesrin, yes, yes, March Dental School, great, no, no, August Pharmacy, no, no, March DDS, so Dentistry. I'll give myself one minute to connect with everybody, don't want to exclude anybody. So let's see here, Andy, two times, and I know many more for other students, no big deal. Yes, been taking it, noteful. In two months, pharmacy, yes, yes, many, <laughs> great regard, beginning of April, pharmacy, no, yes, great, March 9th, veterinary, mm -hmm. registration, listening, 25, mayor, no, yes, may pharmacy, let's go a little bit faster, I'm just scanning these, you can as well, really cool. Love your participation, everybody. Really good to see everybody here. PT, physical therapy. Masters, good. So that's everyone that submitted. Nice, high five. So we see students. Pharmacy, physical therapy, nursing, dentistry, un, uh, graduate school, uh, veterinary science. So kind of like graduate school, even dentistry, we can say all that. But so we see everyone here is an academic professional. And that's really what we focus on, meaning you're taking your degrees from abroad and bringing them here. You're looking for master's degree. degree. So I know that you all need top scores, 20 20, 22, 25 plus, as high as we can get. So let's go through the overview. So everybody who's new to the TOEFL, don't worry. You know, you keep following us on, on uh, let me get, change this here. We've got two new submissions. Cool. So the TOEFL has a reading, listening, speaking, and writing section. Each scored out of 30, two hours to complete the exam. In the listening section, this is where your score comes from. You begin by listening to a conversation of two to three minutes. You take your notes. You have two sheets of scratch paper if you take it at a test center or your whiteboard if you take it at home. So you listen, you take notes. Then you get five questions to answer. When you answer those questions, you have a timer of six minutes and 30 seconds, but interestingly, it's to complete two listenings. So next you hear a lecture, about four to six minutes long, and six questions to answer, and of course those determine your score, how many you got correct. So you have six minutes and 30 to answer all of these questions in these two lectures. 
if it's a little confusing, at least you got a little intro. Don't worry, I'll talk about our courses, extra resources at the end of the course at this class. Then you get another set, three listenings. It begins with the conversation, same pattern, five questions, then a lecture, six questions, then a lecture, six questions, and you have a total of 10 minutes to answer those 17 questions. So as you can see, you have five listenings with five or six questions after each. So that makes it super simple, right? So you have a total of 28 questions that determine your score out of 30. So intellectually, we can see pretty simply, oh, about every question is worth approximately one point, which is one of the things that makes the TOEFL a little bit intense now because it got shorter. For those of you who are new to the TOEFL, you know, it's the only TOEFL you know. But for those who've taken it before, a shift has happened that every question has more meaning now. So we really want to do our best to do well. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So on average, you have 30 to 35 seconds per question. And that is enough time, but it does mean you have to move quickly. That implies that there needs to be some kind of somewhat instantaneous awareness. We don't have too much time to figure things out. It's really going to come from, did we hear and take notes well? Do we know the questions? So it's like, okay, here's the answer to this question. I choose my answer choice, right? Because every question is a multiple choice answer out of four. And then let's see here, yes, year, one month. And recursive, oh, kind words, I appreciate you. So that's the intro to the TOEFL listening section. I'm going to train you now on the question types. So everyone understands for the TOEFL listening, I can teach you listening comprehension. I could teach you vocab for the listening, uh, topics, common topics for the listening. I can teach you note taking. But today is going to be question type, so it's going to be limited because it's one hour. So comprehension check. Everybody 100%. Let's light those comments up. Just let me know we're all following and feeling good so far. Appreciate you, Kershid. Kind words. So it takes about 10 seconds for me to say something live and then for you to hear it and respond. So that's why sometimes there's a little delay. So I'm seeing the yeses comes in, come in. Yeah, regard multiple choice. So. I'm going to deal only with multiple choice questions, but sometimes I'll talk about it with detail questions. You have to check boxes. Sometimes you have to click something and move it to put it in order. So there's some variation. Everyone's good, right? Send those yeses in. Love it. So I'm going to say that there are seven question types, and I'm going to discuss how common they are. So the first question type you can expect on basically every listening, conversation, and lecture, this is for both, is a main idea question. And a main idea question is testing your ability when you hear these three-minute conversations, these five-minute lectures, do you understand how it was started? Because all listening start with, here's the focus. And then can you follow a little bit how it develops? because it's going to develop from that main point. This is what we're going to talk about. So that's the first kind of question you get. You get one per listening. The next is detail. And these are the most common. You get about one to three. And they're essentially trying to understand, can you hear important facts? Like the professor is talking about computers, and she says how they're manufactured. Like, did you know that? So what important fact do we know about the manufacturing of computers? It's just, can, are you catching these details of the professor's lesson? Purpose questions are different. They're understanding, I would say, transitions. For example, so I like candy. For example, chocolate. What? Why do did I say chocolate to give an example of what I like? So it's the ability to see a relationship. How is this following the previous information? Is it countering? Is it supporting? Is it illustrating? 
right? So that's what a purpose question is. You get about one or two per listening. And these are very common with analogies. I'm not going to test analogies here. You know, there's a limitation. But an analogy is when we make a comparison. When I teach the TOEFL and I'm working to help you improve, I always talk about how studying, improving on the TOEFL is like working out. Because just like when you work out, you can't expect to go to the gym once and get stronger. You need to go multiple times, weeks and months. And really, the limitation to how strong you can get is not the gym. It's how long you go to the gym, how frequently. So I'm using the gym as an analogy for how to study for the TOEFL. So the implication, which means I'm implying, just like at the gym, you have to go multiple times. For the TOEFL, you can't expect to review. You can't just do one lesson and you're good. You have to review it. So why does the professor mention the gym? The purpose is to help you understand how to study for the TOEFL. So purpose is analogies and seeing relationships, for example, on the other hand. Inference questions test your ability to understand grammatical algebra. This is the best way I can explain it. Very precise when you get used to it. So you see this word most or every. It's very simple when I say grammatical algebra, when I give these examples. So if I say most plants grow 10 feet tall. The inference, because of the word most, you know, is not all. So some plants don't grow 10 feet tall. Every is, is these words that show something else. So if I say, every year, the rabbit population decreases. And then it's like, what can you infer about 10 years from now? the rabbit population will be smaller than it is now, right? Or it's like if I say every year, so John starts with $0 in the bank, and every year he saves $100. What can we infer after five years? So that's not really going to be on the TOEFL. The first one about the rabbit population is more likely. But you see, oh, inference is your ability to understand these grammatical words that have a sense of algebra meaning, they imply something that's not stated. Because if I say most people like chocolate, that implies some people don't. I didn't say it. That's why it's an inference, implication, imply. And it comes from specific words that help us do this grammatical algebra. So we're going to work on that. Question number, f uh, no, and you get about zero to one per listening. I think they're pretty common, but sometimes you don't get it because you only get five or six questions per listening. So throughout your entire listening, you will get one of each of these, but in any individual conversation or lecture, you might not. And as I was saying before, detail, you might check boxes. So, you know, out of the five, sentences, which two were mentioned about computer manufacturing, and you have to check two or click two answers. Uh, the professor describes the process of glacial formation. These are the steps of glacial formation. Please put them in order, right? So details are really understanding those facts. I forgot to mention that. Another question type is opinion attitude. Your ability to understand, does the professor think this is a good thing, a bad thing, a certain thing, an uncertain thing? And this tests your understanding of vocabulary. Excellent, wonderful, confusing, not sure, idioms, and intonation, right? Intonation being the pitch of your voice, yeah, uh, right? That kind of stuff are like, it seems likely. Right, so intonation creates meaning. So these questions test, did this student understand the vocab, the idiomatic expression, the intonation of the professor to be aware that the professor likes this idea, 
doesn't like this idea, thinks it's doubtful, or thinks or feels very confident about it. Listen again, questions. Excuse me. <clears throat> That's where you the recording is played, so you hear it you know, a sentence from the lecture or two or three, what does the professor mean when he says this? And then it's basically the same thing as number five. Number five is more, what's the attitude? Number six is, can you tell the meaning of the sentence? But these are, you know, really idiom driven. Opinion attitude is vocab. You know, what kind of language is the professor using? This is very rare. I'm kind of introducing this question a little bit myself. You, you probably may not get that question on your entire TOEFL, but if you take the TOEFL a few times, you might get it. And I'm including it here as a, as a bonus for my ability to help you build skills. So this one is rare. You may never get it. Uh, if you take five TOEFLs, you may get one. And this is structure, which is very similar to main idea. Sometimes they replace the main idea with this, which is how is the lecture or conversation, how does it develop? What are the parts of it? What's its structure? So we're going to test each of these. So I hope you're excited. Let me see here. So Mayor, will you focus on answering technique? Today, I'm going to focus more on understanding the question, not answering technique, because you're right. When it comes to answering questions, we teach, I would say, one element is the process. Hear the question, think of the answer, double check in your notes, and then evaluate each answer choice with what we call our yes, no, maybe technique. Then we have the specific strategy for each question type. Then we have understanding the wrong answer choices and how they're created so you're less likely to get tricked. Today is going to be on understanding these questions, what they mean, what they're asking, so that when you hear a conversation, if you know the questions that are going to be asked about it, you can listen better as a TOEFL student, right? Because it's like you know what's going to be in the lecture that you're going to be asked about so you can do better. So I can say kind of, but that's not our concentration for this class. Hope that makes sense. So yeah, sir, took the TOEFL, lowest score in the listening, 15. So yeah, we're going to work to improve that. You appeared on the TOEFL today. Bravo to you for also taking the class. Got a 19. How can I increase and improve my vocabulary? We can talk about that at the end, but a quick answer, actually, I'll just answer it now for you and everybody, is you should have a notebook, a vocab notebook. You can do it online. You can do it with Microsoft Word. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have it on your phone. That's fine. Whatever resource you want. I'm just going to say a notebook because sometimes physical is a little bit better for studying. Depends on the student. So you have a place where you every day are learning three to seven new words from your studies, from your reading in for the TOEFL and in general. And you add to this notebook three to seven words a day. Every 250 words you learn, you'll notice a level up in comprehension. You'll have enough new vocab that you'll hear everything more clearly. So that's how we recommend to study, rather than a specific source at the moment. 16 and listening, working for a few months, we'll work to get better. How can we improve our note taking? I'm going to, if you go to our lives, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you see that we had a previous class on note-taking. So I go into an hour on improving that. But for now, let's transition. Meyer, great, makes sense. February 12th, got 29, high five. Shabana, 29 in the listening. Bravo, like a native speaker. Can we speak with eyes closed in the test? I believe so, yes. I haven't had a student tell me they've done that, and I don't do that when I do the speaking section, but it shouldn't be a problem, not at all. 27 on the listening, looking for 30, yeah, yeah, I hope this helps you. So everybody, we ready to move on to the practice. These question types make sense. You understand what you're going to get. After a conversation, five questions. After a lecture, six questions. Each one will have a main idea. 
Each one will have at least one detail, at least one purpose. And then inference and opinion attitude, listen again and structure, maybe, maybe not. Feed me that feedback. Sahel, appreciate you. Iram, 22 and listening. Shabana, December gold course. Bravo, bravo. Hope you're also going to be in March. Let's see. So let me know that feedback, everybody. Comprehension check. We're feeling 100%. Any questions, send them my way. I'll assume that we're okay, unless I see some no's coming in. And we're going to start practicing. So everyone, get your scratch paper ready. Get your pen or pencil ready. So you can take notes. What I'm going to do is to practice, I'm going to, I made up a lecture. So this is all made up, but I want to test certain skills. So I wanted to just make it up. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver this lecture in parts. So I'm going to give you about one minute of a lecture and then ask you a question on that one minute. So that way it's fresh and you see how the question relates to the information. This is going to train you to listen better, take notes better, apply strategy better, and answer more correctly. And then, uh, let's see here. And as I said, you know, for the lives, I have a feeling we're going to go over. Our class is scheduled to stop at 11. That's the teaching portion. It might stop 11.15, 11.30. I hope to do it on time. And then after that, I'm going to talk about our gold course. That usually takes another 15 to 30 minutes. But I want to address the questions you ask. So, so Krishit says, sir, what do you think? Shall I appear again in a week or? For the TOEFL for everybody, my recommendation is when you take a TOEFL and you haven't earned your dream score, I directly say study a hundred hours before your next TOEFL because that's the only way that you're not I guess, wasting your money and your time taking TOEFLs you're not ready for. Because once you've taken the TOEFL and studied hard, improvement is really going to come from hours of study. So I would say at least 50 hours between TOEFL, ideally 100. That way, every time you take the TOEFL, you're better and you're prepared to succeed. And then regard, where do we find the live videos on the website? So real quick for you and everybody, I'm just going to show you via YouTube. So let me. Show everybody real quick. I can hear. Because I did mention this. So when you go to Noteful. Let me bring up the site here. Right, Noteful TOEFL Mastery. I think uh, YouTube, we have it on Facebook as well, but YouTube's probably where it's also strong. And you go here to the section you might see where it says live. You see all our past lives. Right, and this is a great resource. And then let me do the same with Facebook for everybody. So give me one moment. And as I said before, you know, one of the beauties of the live classes is that I get to just take time to address all your questions, try to be 100%. If I were studying, I would want to know where these free resources are too. So if you go to our Facebook page, right? So you go on Facebook, our name on Facebook, little different, Noteful ESL Help. Similarly, there's a section where you see here more and you see that we have lives. So you click on that and you not only see the live, you know, we're having as we're having it, but you also see Facebook, we actually have maybe two years, three years of live videos. Uh, YouTube, we've just started uploading and launching on YouTube probably in the last six months, maybe close to a year. So you'll find a lot on Facebook, really, for every section. And I hope everyone knows and feels all the live classes, free or not, we teach with the same power, right? So you'll see that there. Good. 
Cow Cobb enrolled in the next course. Awesome. Meyer Diamond Course. Excellent. Where can I find more practice? I'll talk about that at the end. Yeah, same thing, Reza. More practice. I'll talk about that. So good, good. So Aubin, you say that you have 22 to 28 when practicing after applying your recommendations regarding expanding vocab. A great reminder for everybody, well done, Aubin, that building your vocab three to seven words is a requirement in all of our courses. It is a really important part of improving your TOEFL. And Sahel, yes, this would be saved. And appreciate you too, sharing the love. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get ready. Here's our mini lecture. Let's get started. So scratch paper ready, pen ready. Um, I have to do it on the screen. So just look away from the screen so you don't see the transcript. But if you want to, you can look. Here's the beginning of a lecture. So on your TOEFL, a lecture begins. Here's a imaginary way it starts. Farms in the United States face numerous challenges. Each can be an important reason for why a farm may develop into a long-lasting success or a short-term failure. The development of farming as a successful business practice evolved in a unique way. You see, in the year, early years of agricultural mass production in the U.S., farmers ran their farms personally. Then, managers were brought in by investors because of the growing complexity that arose when farmers worked to produce more and more goods for sale. If we look closely, we can learn a great deal about the development by understanding the changes brought on by managers. So this is the beginning of a lecture. And now everyone, you can look at the screen. And the beginning of the lecture will always, even a conversation, express with definitive language, what are we going to focus on? So I'm going to read this question out loud to you. What is the lecture mainly about? Even though you've only heard the first minute of it, the first 30, 45 seconds, you have an understanding, but that doesn't mean it'll be easy. So here we have common ways the TOEFL tricks you, as well as an answer choice that I hope makes more sense to you. So again, you have 30 to 35 seconds to answer. I'm going to give you a little more time because we're starting. I'm going to give you a minute. Please text your answer in the comments as soon as you have it. The lecture I just delivered, what is it mainly about? A, B, C, or D. Okay, now, this is really fascinating because I see a tremendously large number of us choose A, and that's usually the right direction to go, but this is the main idea, and it begins with new information. So if we go up here, is there language to support that the main idea is a new discovery? So let's read this again, and we can look at the screen. Farms in the United States face numerous challenges. Each can be an important reason for why a farm may develop into a long-lasting success or a short-term failure. The development of farming as a successful business practice evolved in a unique way. 
You see, in the early years of agricultural mass production in the U.S., farmers ran their own farms personally. Then, managers were brought in by investors because of the growing complexity that arose when farmers worked to produce more and more goods for sale. If we look closely, which is the language that establishes our focus, we as a class, today we're going to focus on, I'm getting to my point, we can learn a great deal about the development by understanding the changes brought on by managers. So we are going to learn how managers help develop farms, how they came in and changed things. I think everyone was aware of that. Now among the answer choices, new information about farm management, very important to learn, is incorrect. Because new information means the professor is saying, we've discovered something new that we didn't know before. Meaning we're changing our understanding of something. We've just learned something new. Not information about, new information about. So new is not justified. The rest looks good, but new is incorrect. Whether farmers or managers were more important for the success of large farms doesn't match our understanding that it's how managers came in and changed things to make farms better, uh, make farms run more like businesses. That's what we all understand. Differences between how farms ran with managers to compare compared to without? Kind of, maybe, because I did have a discussion of management before managers like farm before managers and the focus after so this is like so so right a and b we can state are wrong right this sense of whether farmers or managers were more important is not the focus as we've read so c is a maybe though differences i don't like too much but new is not justified Differences make sense because we can learn a great deal about the development by understanding the changes. So that means there's a difference. Changes. So a change means different. And as a result, possible. Possible. D, the reason why managers helped farmers succeed with their farms. This can be a maybe as well. But if you look over here, we can learn a great deal about the development by understanding the changes. So this sense of the reason why managers helped farmers succeed with farm their farms isn't as strong as CCAT. So C is our answer. And by the time we get, remember, main idea questions, as I've discussed them, not only test how a lecture starts, which is the most important thing, like how a listening starts, but how it develops. So as we finish the lecture, it will be helpful to see C as the answer. But for now, even that beginning paragraph points us to C more than others. So don't worry, I'm going to do a comprehension check at the end. I want to go through a few more questions. And then Joanne, but the word learn indicates that there are new information. Good, but no. Learn means new information for you. But it doesn't mean I'm giving you new information, which is like, if I say I'm going to teach you new information, it means this information did not exist before, right? It means there's been a discovery that we as researchers have made. But you, as a student, listening to the lecture and learning, it's new information for you. So the main idea of the lecture is not new information about farms. It's just teaching you about the history of farms. So it actually implies this information is not new. It's something maybe well-known and understood from the professor. Definitely something to review. Let's go ahead now and continue this lecture and train our detail question. Hope that made sense and we'll, we'll do a little review over time. So deep breath, 
Let's keep listening, keep taking our notes. Here we go. Managers who entered farms came not because farmers were poorly qualified to run farms. Farms are complex systems that were run successfully by farmers until the demand for production increased dramatically in the 20th century. Managers arrived when investors initially discovered that farms were indeed an industry, a business sector worth looking at and investing in. They saw that farms could produce at scales never seen or even thought of before. Managers came in as a result to help implement the equipment, systems, and several other factors necessary to turn farms into entities that could rival any large business. So this is the next unit of information. It describes why managers came in. So we're going to get a detail question here that is testing, do we understand that information that was provided to us? So what is the importance of managers in farms in the US according to what we just heard? I'll give you one minute again on the TOEFL, it's 30 to 35 seconds, but I want to give everybody a little time, be a little bit more comfortable, text your answer as soon as you have it. One minute. Bravo, everyone. So the majority of us were choosing between C and D. And I've created these questions. I made up this lecture because over 16 years of teaching the TOEFL, I've become pretty familiar with the language that tricks you. So if we, so we need to hear and know what we're hearing so we can choose correctly. Let's look at, let's review what we just heard. Managers who entered farms came not because farmers were poorly qualified to run farms. Farms are complex systems that were run successfully by farmers until the demand for production increased dramatically in the 20th century. Managers arrived when investors initially discovered that farms were indeed an industry a business sector worth looking at and investing in. They saw that farms could produce at scales never seen or even thought of before. So the statements are, farms were run well by farmers. They were run successfully. But investors saw there's a big demand for food. So we're going to send people over to you to make you be able to be even bigger to do much more. So the importance of managers is helping scale, uh, increase the capacity, the production of farms. They saw that farms could produce at scales never seen or even thought of before. Managers came in as a result. They did not come in as a result of inability. They came in as a result of trying to increase capacity. So if we scroll down here, what is the importance of managers? You see this question is testing comprehension, a detail. Like, well, the importance is they made the businesses, they made farms produce more. And so the language of C is correct. Now produce more, it would be great. It would be easier, but run as large businesses is the idea. 
They proved that farming could be operated as large businesses. In other words, a business sector. They saw that farms could produce at scales never seen or even thought of before. And I want you to know that there are positives and negatives to doing this in little units of information. So I gave you one paragraph and then I gave you the question on it, right? So there's a positive because it really helps you understand that the TOEFL asks you questions in this way related to each unit of information. The drawback to teaching this way is that when you listen to a lecture fully, it makes it a little bit more clear that unit in relationship to everything else. So when so it's, this is a good training to help you see, okay, questions match units of information. Questions match how am I listening? But when we finish, everything will make more sense. So if you review this, all these answer choices will be more clear because you will have heard everything. So, but if I teach, if I, if I give you the entire lecture for training, the drawback is you might get over-focused on note-taking. You might get a little distracted as you listen, and it'll be harder for you to divide the lecture in units. So that's why when you hear me at the end, that's why we train regularly, because we need to provide many kinds of lessons to help you build skills fully. That's why our training we're going to talk about is 100 hours uh, versus 10 hours. So this is just one hour of just the training we're trying to do to help you. So feel okay if it's tricky because it is a little bit awkward, though it has benefits to listen in pieces. So they show that farms could be run successfully with the right support. I brought this in because run successfully, managers helping scale, it sounds really good, but the farms were run successfully before managers. So that was not their importance. Their importance was scaling, increasing production. And the only language that helps is C. A, they support the theory that farms are complex business systems is, is not the focus. It wasn't about managers showing it was complex. And they succeeded even earlier, the farmers. Farms are complex systems that were run successfully by farmers until the demand for production increased, which implies then they had some trouble, but not that they couldn't be run. They provide evidence that farmers were not able to run farms without help, but they were. It's just when production increased, then there's an inference that perhaps it got difficult, but the main focus is we have production, we need to scale, you need help scaling. And then regard, can we have the whole lecture, then the questions in a separate video or PDF? I would love to do that. Unfortunately, just with the capacity, like the ability we have, like the farms, uh, right now, the lesson as delivered in the video in this free class is the complete offering we have. So at the moment, we won't have like a separate recording or a separate video for the practice. Just, you know, click play and review. But I do understand that would be great. Just limitations in our ability. So now the next unit of information, which will test us on purpose. So let's go ahead and listen and take notes. When managers first arrived, they brought with them new equipment that carried out functions that older equipment did, but at a significantly larger scale. The equipment to plant, nurture, and harvest crops could be operated by fewer persons and produce far larger crops. Large plows were one piece of equipment that illustrated this most. Before, plows were operated by one person and could prepare one line of soil for seeding. With a large plow, multiple lines of soil could be prepared by one person. With a few large plows, a team could prepare much more land than that same team could with smaller standard plows. So, you know, you get the meaning, you get the focus. And for the purpose question here is, 
Why does the professor talk about large plows? On the TOEFL, you get 30 to 35 seconds. We're taking our time because this is training. One minute, A, B, C, or D. Bravo. Our group is starting to move more towards the correct answer. And that tells you, I want to share with you, that it's very important to understand that the TOEFL is just like a professional performance. So similar to an athlete warming up before a competition, you want to warm up before the TOEFL, be, TOEFL because I, I think you're experiencing, you're sharper now. I believe you're you're warmed up. You're listening for the individual words. You're seeing the connection. There's more that's happening, I think, in your brain, and this is normal. So just know that one thing that you can do before you take the exam, the days before, is like this sense that maybe read some technical information, like something to warm up your brain for the hyper focus you need for the TOEFL. Or the deep breathing froggy, like, I'm going to listen with full power. Because the third question, we're getting a little better. So the answer here is B. Now, B is challenging because it's an opposite. If It would be much easier to say, to point out that newer equipment was able to support large-scale production. But instead, we did the opposite, which has the same meaning as implied throughout the lecture so far, that early equipment before managers or the equipment before managers came in was unable to support large production. Because the purpose of large plows is, if you begin, when managers first arrived, they brought with them new equipment that carried out functions that older equipment did. Their function was the same, same function, but at a significantly larger scale. The equipment to do all of these things, right, was made so that when managers brought them in, fewer people could produce larger crops. All about scale, very unified explanation. And then we have large plows as an example of equipment that can produce at large scales, replacing equipment that couldn't produce at large scales. So B is the perfect connection with that. A, to emphasize one difference between how new and older equipment functioned, the function is the same. The capacity, the amount is different. To give an example of the equipment that most managers preferred, there wasn't language of preference. To identify which equipment was most helpful, it was an example of producing at scale among other equipment. It wasn't stated as most helpful, right? Most helpful. B is the best. And then Mary M. Oh, and Reza, yeah, what is the meaning of plows? We always need to be learning. A plow is a piece of equipment that is used to dig up the earth. So here you see you rip holes in the earth, you put the seeds, and then you bury it again. So these are plows. 
this one looks good here. You kind of see that digging up the earth. You see an old way with oxen. So now let's continue and let's get some questions here. Mary M, my problem is that I lose focus during listening and cannot go back to listen again. That is why I'm making mistakes while answering. One of the best ways to help you when you lose focus is to visualize. Visualize means that you might practice listening with your eyes closed. So you're actually creating a movie in your mind from what you're hearing. And we teach this a lot. It's super important for comprehension as well. Because by doing this, you're engaging your brain in the story. You're less likely to lose focus when you're making the picture in your head. Number two is remember Froggy. Because you want to remind yourself, this exam is like $250, $55. It's an exam for your future. If you don't take it, you have to pay and take it again. It's intense. So if you also remember that, it will be like coffee. Like, I better pay attention because this is important for my life. So if you put those two things together and you do it right now, like this is for my life. This is the difference between passing and not passing. This is the difference between my dream career or I have to postpone for another six months to a year. Yeah, that's going to wake you up. Hopefully not with stress, just with attention. And then visualizing is going to be a big help. Is the answer always in the first 10 seconds of listening or first and second reading line? Well, Mooney, remember, the lecture transcript is just here because of our class. On the TOEFL, you don't see it. So the main idea answer is usually in the beginning of the lecture. And we teach you to listen in units. So that means that lectures are delivered in units of information, just like reading paragraphs. So questions are related to units of information, testing you. Do you understand this unit? And then they use a question type to test your understanding of that unit. So maybe this unit of information, detail question, or maybe purpose question, or maybe listen again question. If it's a really big unit of information, maybe you get two questions on it. So it's not so much that. And yeah, Reza, 380 Canadian dollars. Is that true? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So now let's go to the inference. So listen, take notes. We're already in bonus time. Oh, my goodness. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I believe I want to stop here because... I want to take time and I don't want to rush. And what we'll do then is we'll have a, another live and we'll make it for next week. And it'll be nice because what will happen is that it'll match the gold course a little bit because next week on Saturday, by having a continuation, it'll be, and what I consider it, a preparation for our listening class series. So everybody, we have... Inference questions, opinion attitude questions, listen again questions, and structure questions to cover. And maybe, uh, I think where God brought up that it would be nice if we had like the lecture separately and the questions. So in preparation, I can do that. So that's cool. So everyone comfortable that we pause here and this class will actually be part one of a two-part series. We'll make another class for everyone here to continue next week. It'll be good prep for our students in our gold course and for all our free, uh, our students who are just joining for the first time. It'll be a wonderful way to keep working together. Does that sound good, everybody? Dogme, can you finish the inference question? That's why I stopped because those questions take time to teach. So I apologize for stopping because I know the inference question is one that we have a lot of energy towards. Like, oh, I want to learn that one. So I, I hope that makes you excited for next week. And just know it's because I don't want to rush through it. I think one hour of teaching without a break is is enough. You know, normally we take a 10-minute break. So I hope that's okay. 
Eslam, I struggle with the summary question in the reading section. Do you have free material to know the right strategy to answer it? Yes, Eslam. So for everybody and Eslam included, remember to go to our Facebook page because YouTube has our lives. It has our last two, four, six, eight, nine lives. So we've, we've been doing this for years. But our Facebook page, if you go to our lives, you'll see that our Facebook page has maybe 40. So if you search here, let me see if, I don't think they have a little search icon. Yeah, you can search, but I'm going to show you, let's see, uh, summary. It's in here somewhere. They do reading. Okay. Let's scroll down to the bottom here. TOEFL reading score. Reading class. Reading class. So you're going to see that. Now I think, you know what? I should title these better for you. We started to title them better. Because there we go. We have reading, basic comprehension, detail questions. So we do have training on summary questions in here if you review. And you can, you know, kind of click around to the end, kind of see what's there for the videos. Uh, our YouTube lives are better because we have them divided into chapters. So, Eslam, if you're willing to do a little extra work, it's there for you. And I'll be talking about our course too. All right. Yeah, yeah, sir. Could you share the exact date of the next class? Yes. So we're going to, we didn't have it planned, but because we didn't complete this one, it will be March. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Ooh, okay. So I'm happy I have it scheduled. So next week we have a success story interview. So that's me personally interviewing a TOEFL success story at 10 a.m. So our next live will be March 16th. So it will, it will have to wait two weeks, right? So it'll be as we're doing the listening, but we're going to finish this series. So everybody, Ma Saturday, March 16th at 10 a.m. New York time, we will have another live to finish these question types. It took a little bit more time than expected, but I want to make sure to have full time. So March 16th, Saturday at 10 a.m. And we'll create an event so that those of you on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, you're going to see that in the next few days so that you can mark it and save it within your social media platform, the one that you prefer. Let me take away that so you don't study ahead. So appreciate you, everybody, for understanding. Can you mention sources for 24 practice? Well, for practice, I'm going to talk about what we have. When you're looking for practice for the reading, listening, speaking, or writing, honestly, there are so many sources out there that I think a Google search is often going to be quite supportive. So I think that practice is often not what's missing for student success, but specific training to improve. So I think Reza, you can you can trust most, you know, Google search practice for this or practice for that. And there's a lot online at the moment. I do better when I lessen my notes. How can I get rid of that sound in my head telling me to write as much as possible? Also, this is very good. So I'm going to answer some questions right now. We've already said that, you know, this class, I over prepared. So we had our one hour lesson, which was pretty packed. I hope you enjoyed it. High five to everybody for that. And we're going to continue March 16th with the second half of the class at 10 a.m. I'll be posting on social media. So what I'm going to do now is answer all your questions and at the right point within the next few minutes, transition into how we can keep working together so that if you like the class, we have courses. We have our course starting this Monday with live classes for the reading, listening, speaking, and writing, our Miracle March and April Gold course. So stay with me so I can discuss that, invite you to register, attend, and you can see all the cool stuff it has for you. So a little bit of question answering time at the moment. So Rigad talks about when you learn something, 
like I need to take fewer notes that helps you improve, you have an old habit that often keeps wanting to pull you back. For example, your brain keeps telling you, I can't miss these details. I should be writing down everything. So the funny thing is, you have to have a response memorized. You practice it. So regard, regard and everybody, when your old thought for your old habit comes up, you respond with your new thought or habit that you've memorized, such as, that's an old thought for my old score. I know that will lower my score because I've learned it. And then you breathe and you continue. That's that's the way that I think is the most practical and immediately applicable. For example, on the TOEFL reading, you keep rereading sentences and your brain says, I forgot that sentence. I didn't get that sentence. I didn't understand. I got to read it again. And that slows you down and destroys your time management. So what do you memorize? You memorize. If I reread sentences, I'll lose my time management. That will lower my score. I'm going to keep reading with care. So you actually create a response to that. That's the key and most important thing to help. And it's like willpower. But we'll talk about that more. Yeah, March 16th at 10 a.m. New York time. Oh, uh, Albin, that's the day you're going to take the TOEFL. Don't worry. It'll be there recorded if you need it, but I hope you don't need it. I wish you good luck and hope this helped. And if possible, you know, I invite you to our course, which we'll talk about soon. Kadosh, I paid for the reading session, but I didn't receive any link to the class. I'm going to talk about that now. Happier in it, right? So you registered for the reading portion of our gold course. The link is in your program. All the links to attend are there. And usually as a courtesy, you know, 15 minutes before class, I send a quick email to everybody. But when I talk about the course, I'll show you. But go into your account, click on your membership and read that page and you'll see, oh, the link to attend is right here. So you don't receive it. It's, it's part of your course. And I'll talk about that for everybody. Appreciate it, everybody. The positive energy for the class. High five. Happy you liked it. So how long does it take the course? So let me go ahead now and transition, answer your questions as I talk about the next step. So that's all the beauty I had prepared for you. So now you know why we're going to continue it next, next in two weeks. So the next steps to conquer your TOEFL. So you see how we work together. You see the training in the class. So I'm going to talk, okay, about the length of the course, which is six weeks with 100 hours of training. But before that, of course, I want to give you some positive energy and, of course, show you that the course works. So one of my favorite success stories, they're all favorite, but the language stated in the in the success story interview with Ahmed, I think really points out what the course is designed for that I'm going to talk about now for the TOEFL to help you pass. So Ahmed talks about take a course. If you're struggling, if you're not sure, take a course with us or anybody. But if you trust us, then take a course with us. But take a course. I wish I started sooner. Once you have identified and you're studying, you know, you know, I'm on track with how I'm studying because I notice my improvement. Or I'm a bit overwhelmed. I'm not improving as fast as I want to. And I'm having trouble getting my information. Where do I practice? Where do I find training? How do I improve this question type? Where do I develop skills here? I'm struggling here. Because those are holes that are going to make you keep getting the same score. The average success story says one of two things. I wish I started sooner. Or I wish I didn't take a break. One of those two things. I wish I took the TOEFL seriously sooner, started sooner, or I wish I didn't get discouraged and take that long break in the middle. Because forces not only give courses not only give you material, but they force you to study. And this is beautiful. Have faith in yourself. Every success story talks about the moments of doubt. For those of you who have experienced it, either as you're studying or taking the TOEFL, I promise you, everybody. 
you will pass. You know you will. It's going to happen. Our success story, who scored 110 overall on the TOEFL, pushes you for that. You will pass. And I know also, like, we have a lot of success stories. And I haven't been the best at making sure that we keep our success stories up to date for you to keep encouraging you and let you know things are working. The course helps and you will pass. So we have an interview scheduled with Ahmed, but he sent me a text message. I'll talk about how in this course, I give you my personal number, but you see 32 messages. So I, I'm very personal for a lot of students. So you just need to be patient with my replies, but I'll always reply. So Ahmed let me know after two years with the TOEFL, he defeated it. He wanted to share his success, right? Taking the courses that I'm going to talk to you about now. That's my congratulatory text to you. And it was just a few weeks ago. I have more texts like this, but I really like Ahmed's. Every student is unique and different. I thought it would be great. And he shared this. Send this picture to anyone told you it is impossible. So he really is wanting to encourage you. And then, you know, my comment back to him, a lot of hearts going around. This might be a little difficult for you to see, but his initial score on the TOEFL was 65. Six in the reading, 15 in the listening, 21 in the speaking, 23 in the writing. And he took the TOEFL March 26, 2022, before the changes. February 3rd, 2024, reading 23, listening 26, speaking 28, writing 24, total score 101. So two years going through TOEFL changes beautifully with his effort, his energy, the support, I hope, through Noteful. That's a 36-point improvement. He's not the only one. If you have your system with Noteful, if you're studying it, you will get the same results. So I want you to know this works. The only thing necessary is your effort. So I'm super excited about the course I'm telling you now because we've made changes to, I think, make it the best ever. So if you're ready to really work hard together or my continuing students, you want to continue, you're ready to move forward, you're not registered already, this is the best way for us to continue. So how does it work? Well, starting this Monday at 8 p.m. New York time to 10 p.m., we're going to start with our classes, and they will run every Monday and Wednesday for the next six weeks from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. New York time. Just like, you know, this special Zoom link to click to join, and I teach you. Three classes will be on the TOEFL reading, where we practice a reading and every question type. I'm going to talk about the that in a little bit more detail soon, so stay with me, because it's very special how we're going to train. Three classes on the TOEFL listening to teach through everything, so six hours on every TOEFL section with practice and guidance. The speaking, the writing. Now, there are no individual reviews in this course, but during class, we do review student work, student example answers, student writing. So what makes this special is that the course goes far beyond the classes. So let me share with you the 100 hours of training to boost your score. So this is to conquer all sections on your new TOEFL. You take this course, I guarantee you a higher score, I give you my personal number, so any issues, you have my support, so I back it 100%. And so the homework has four hours of training on how to study. We call it masterful studying. How to organize your study time, how to review lessons to master them, how to make sure you take what you learn and turn it into what you do on the exam. We have 24 hours of pre-recorded videos to prepare you before each class. So in the class, I'm actually going to be diving deep into the TOEFL to really train you to build your skills with a lot of practice. So that means I need you to have all the basics mastered. So before each class, you will have about two to three hours of homework to complete that covers all the basics. You also have 24 hours of training 
We call them our critical habits to build your academic English skills, your grammar, your pronunciation, your reading comprehension, your note taking, your thinking of reasons and examples, all of these fundamental academic skills that go, that the TOEFL tests, but aren't quite, you know, TOEFL readings or TOEFL lectures. Our classes, 24 hours of live classes, right? Every Monday and Wednesday for two hours, three classes per section, 24 hours. And then we have guided homework, like guided in the four hours of how to study. We teach you how do you review the class to get better? So the homework and the expectation is that you take all the classes, they're recorded if you miss them for you to review, and you review them, right? You got to study them at least 24 hours. So, so beautifully organized. We're so happy. That's 100 solid hours of training. But we have something really important. You have access for as long as you need. It doesn't expire until you pass. So you can really feel comfortable and confident. And if you need more improvement, here's the most important thing. If you review this course from beginning to end, over and over, you can keep improving all the way to a perfect 120. So the reason why our students continue taking classes, and those of you who are registered for the March Miracle March Gold course, this course already, who are here, who registered before, it's because classes have a great energy. They're fun. They're new. Students ask questions. It's dynamic. I'm always improving the lessons. So even though your material is enough to pass, the value of the classes just makes you want to keep taking them. But you can feel confident that you don't have to. It's a choice. You can review your course over and over and you will keep improving. That's how we design it. You keep getting better as you do your homework over and over. But if you get distracted, if you get stuck, if you start to feel bored, then the classes have that unbelievable value. And as I said, this year we're, we're going to stop this, but not yet. You will get for all our new students, our diamond course is a bonus. And our diamond course has 200 plus hours of TOEFL training for all sections. This is a course that many students use alone to pass the TOEFL, our most popular course. And in addition, within this course, I also offer you my personal number so that you can text me for help. It requires a little bit of patience because as you see, I get a lot of messages, but that's just a good way because I think you you can email us at studentsupport at noful.com for you know support in a day or two guaranteed via email. But having my number personally, as long as you're patient, you give me a few days to a week, there's something really powerful to know. I'll always be there to give you some feedback to help you. Not necessarily on your answers for the speaking or writing, right? Like, here's my speaking answer, give me feedback. But out of respect for, I'm struggling, I'm studying, I'm really having trouble here, what should I do? And I'll be right there to help you. But there are limited spaces and the class is starting Monday, and you do have homework. So I invite you all who haven't registered to seriously consider it, and if you need help, join. Because of course, within a week, if you're not happy with it, you can always let us know for a full refund. But as I said before, for those of you serious, because we concentrate on academic professionals who need top scores, and this is, this is not uncommon, this is common, a student improving from a 65 to 101. A student scoring 110 overall. But I don't want you to feel scared because we have students who also just need an 85, 82. But they need it from a 60. They need fast improvement. Students who've improved from a 93 to 101. So what I really like about this course is, as I said, it's so complete and well-structured and it matches what many of you who have been, if you're new to Noteful, you've heard this for the first time. And if you're not, you've heard this like more times than you can count. A hundred hours 
there are like two magic numbers when you're studying the TOEFL. When you study 24 or more hours a week, magic happens in how much you improve. And every 100 hours you study, magic happens in how you connect and absorb information. So studying 12 to 24 plus hours a week, expecting improvement for every 100 hours you study is the magic recipe, as long as you have the right content and we have all of that for you. So the way to register and join, and we do price it for less than the price of a TOEFL. So the idea is, if you're not ready for the TOEFL, you just think to yourself, okay, instead of investing in the TOEFL, I'm going to invest in the course because I'm not ready for the TOEFL. So I'm going to use that to get better. And then, you know, one course is all you need, but many of our students enjoy the classes, enjoy the work. So I encourage them, if you like it, if you enjoy it, keep attending because the schedule pushes you, the energy keeps you engaged, always answering your questions. I think it feels good and is powerful. So let me go through your comments to register. You see it all over our, our social media, the link to click on. If you go to our site, noteful.com, N-O-T-E-F-U-L-L, -L, you see it in our TOEFL prep section, right? The preparation material. We have our online TOEFL classes. You click on that and you see the Miracle March and April Complete Gold Course. You click on that. Please read through it for more important details, but I've given you all the important information. You register like you would for any online course. And I want to show you your first page of the course. Also, if you've already registered, stay on because I want to guide you on the course. So if you look here, what happens is that you create an account after registering, right? Very simple, normal. So here I have our diamond course because it's my account. But in your account, you'll see Miracle March and April Gold course. So you just click on that. And then it takes you to the page to start your studies. So I'm going to go to our gold course. So when you click on Miracle March and April, you'll be taken to this page. And we've redesigned everything. I'm super excited about it. So all you have to do is start reading, following the instructions, and I guide you on everything. So you'll see here, I'll make it bigger. Read this page fully from beginning to end. Every word describes an important part of this course to help you succeed. Your journey to TOEFL success starts here, and this journey is a complicated one. It has several turns. If you skip any part of this page, it's like missing a turn. You'll soon find yourself lost. We pride ourselves on nothing extra, everything specific, everything organized for you. So it's not a course to jump around in. It's a course to follow from beginning to end. And that's the beauty of it. So these hundred hours, you're guided every hour of what to do. So that's the thing that I think really makes it beautiful. And so when you finish this page, when you finish your first page, we tell you, okay, the next thing to do is to start working on your homework. So you see your homework. So the second page of the course you're guided to, I want to show you as well, is we begin by discussing your homework, masterful studying, how to study, the four plus hours I talked about. You see that here. And your preparation for class. So this is important because if you don't complete the preparation, you can still follow the class, but preparation is a big big important part of it. That's why we have class every Monday and Wednesday. So there's space for you to do homework and to review classes or else it will get very overwhelming. So you see for the reading, you click on the reading and we have our training that takes you through the TOEFL reading, videos to watch, what to expect on your exam, the check-in process, the instructions, basic training. So you know everything 100%. And then you see here, before class one, before class two, before class three. So as I shared with you, our first class is on Monday. That's class one, right? Our second class will be on Wednesday, before class two. And our third class will be on Monday, 
so before class three for the reading. And when you click on this, what you'll see is a nice clean description of your homework, which is to complete this training. So the powerful thing is you're going to have training on all the basics, all the question types, everything important. I know exactly what you're training. So in class, I continue. So it's going to be really in-depth, very complete, so we can go into detail. Every question type, reading comprehension, note-taking, answering your questions. As I said, that's why I'm very excited about it. And, you know, in, in every class, for every class, we have important preparation. Even for the speaking and writing, I'm super excited because since we're going to cover all the questions in detail, we can spend the majority of class just training together, building your pronunciation, building your connection, improving your time management, getting you in control and calm. So that's why I said I'm really looking forward to it. And critical habits is what I said about the essential skills, the 24 hours of academic English where we have vocab, reading, you know, how to read well, comprehension, coming up with reasons and examples, your speaking delivery, listening, so you can listen better, and, and lots of great stuff there. So 100 hours of training. So again, I invite you to attend. We're going to finish this little discussion. I'm going to answer questions soon. I'm super excited about it. Students already registered. Start doing your homework. I hope you're enjoying it. Feel patient. 100 hours. Magic is going to happen. And registration all happens nice and comfortable. Follow any link that we have in our social media or just go to TOEFL Prep online TOEFL classes, Miracle March and April course. So that completes this portion of the class. We had the one hour training. We're going to continue it March 16th, Saturday, 10 a.m. We had our discussion, our invitation to start working on the gold course together this Monday, all sections, six weeks, 100 hours. Doesn't expire, so you can take more time to complete it or review it. You will get your benefit of it. And let's go ahead here. So that was, you launched that, okay, from your question. So now you know how long it takes. So appreciate the positivity. Now I'm going to go through all the comments and then we'll close. So let's see. I know it as much as I can. I write a lot, but none of them is useful for answering the questions. What advice would you give? I would give the simplest advice to review this class, this free live class, because as you do, you'll notice it's not important to get the information. I was helping you answer the question by understanding what point the professor was making in the unit of information. Every 30 to 50 seconds, the professor tries to teach you something. So it's not about everything you heard. It's about what is the lesson here. So we have to change the way we listen so that we actually know the answer without looking at our notes because we know the main ideas of the lecture. Challenging, but I think by reviewing it'll be clear. I hope so. And then, Krishid, do you think that I shall appear again in a week? I encourage everybody, you know, you know your you know your ability and you're very skillful. So if you really feel the passion to take the TOEFL, this this week, do it. I wish you success and I think you can do it. And from my experience, I would encourage you though to between any TOEFL, study 100 hours. Before your, your first TOEFL, study at least 60 hours. It's going to ensure you get the most. But sometimes we have different experiences. You know, we only have 10 hours to study. We have a lot of background skill. Totally fine. But that's, you can't hurt yourself by studying 50 to 100 hours before every exam and making that your standard. Which steps do you recommend for those who prefer self-study rather than taking course? Well, there are two kinds of self-study. So self-study means no classes. So I would recommend you register for our diamond course because that course is also all you need to pass. But as a as a company, Noteful, we do at the moment have a concentration on the classes, but our self-study material is enough. So that would be my recommendation, our diamond course. And if you want to study without any course, 
I would say be careful because as long as you feel confident in yourself, totally fine. In that case, you want to organize your free material. So you should have bookmarks of the sites you like for the reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Uh, playlists that you make for YouTube for each section. And you know practice that you print out or organize in a Word document. So if you study by yourself, it's about finding what you like, saving it to review, keeping things organized, and feeling responsible for creating your own course and following it with discipline. And then with self-study, you know, our diamond course will be there for you. Ah, Ragad, I appreciate you. Trust, trust, trust. Happy it helped. It helped Roy Amaliv. Great that you're here. And Elsita, I get it. You're not alone. Struggling with the TOEFL since 2018. It makes sense. Don't feel bad. I I just encourage you. I can't encourage you enough. When you're struggling, take the course. Don't take the TOEFL. Join the Miracle March and April Gold course. And then I'll just keep working with you every week. You ask your questions and we will pass. You, you will continue to learn. This is what I'm doing that's hurting me. I don't need to read like this. I need to read like this. I need to stop doing this when I evaluate answer choices. I need to do this instead, and I'll get more questions correct. So I, I, I want you to trust that that's going to happen. There is a way through it. Positivity. So I'm registered for speaking section of the gold course. How can I contact you to ask some questions? So in your homework, like when you click on the first page, like click on your membership and read every word because you have homework. And in that homework, in that description is my personal number for you to reach me. But as you can imagine, I'm getting a lot of messages. So probably my focus for the next 72 hours will just be responding to messages from students. So it'll take some time. So Krishid, how do I register? S super happy to have you in it. So I hope I explained that. You go to TOEFL Prep. You go to online classes, Miracle March and April. And just like uh, purchasing anything else online, read the description so you know the course. You know, you click on Add to Cart, complete the checkout process, you know, at the bottom of this page. And after you click Submit, you process the registration. You'll immediately have your account as I showed you, and then you click on it and you start studying it right away. So you can do, you can start studying right now for our first class on Monday. So super cool. Let me go back here. Appreciate you, regard. Yeah, so that's what we try to do. Every gold course, as you take it, we try to make the next gold course an update on the previous one which is why most students who take one gold course, even though that's enough, decide to take the next one. It's fun, it's new, it's an improvement, we stay connected. Mooney, how much is it? Right now, under the price of a TOEFL, we're offering it all the 100 hours, the, the number with me to text, for as long as you need it, it's $240, which I think considering what you're getting for a course is really a phenomenal value. Like if you believe in what you're investing in, because it takes a lot of work and energy to produce. And because of a lot of reasons, the investment we're making in the gold course is increasing every month. So it will increase in price in the future. But any student who takes a gold course, when you take the next one, we give discounts significant discounts to keep students attending. So you can trust that too, that after you join to keep joining, we do our best to make sure it's economical. And we do the free classes because we know this is an exam everyone needs. Every country is different with its economic situation. And I hope you see that the live free classes we give are with the same heart and energy as the, as the paid classes. So we try to create that and we store all of our live classes too. So you have that as a reference, but I do, I, I do hope you see that it's worth it. And then Amanula, which steps do you recommend for motivated individuals who prefer self-study rather than taking courses because of financial crisis? I would say 
try to organize your studies by yourself, as I said, for the reading, listening, speaking, and writing. And then you have to realize you are going to pay for the exam. And most students at Noteful are professionals who require minimum scores. So you want to think to yourself, do I want to take four TOEFLs, which is going to punish me with like a thousand dollars? Or do I want to take one course and maybe two TOEFLs? But I want to be honest too, that when we want to improve, sometimes we need that personal attention and help. So it's, it's the challenge. So we have students who've taken multiple courses, small group tutoring with us, really made significant investments because they treat it like going to a university. Because when you improve your English, it's a value beyond the TOEFL. So really, when, when it comes to finances, I think it's so important. And uh, maybe I'll include this here as well. So I'm going to go to our SoundCloud page. So this is for you, Amanula, and everybody. So if you go to SoundCloud, I'm going to try to do this. I had a, a recording specifically for this to talk about this, where we have it here. about the money give me a give me yeah how to save money on your TOEFL so SoundCloud how to save money on your TOEFL 22 minutes where I discuss this and give you good perspective so I'm going to put that in my comments to all so you can all see that. So you can see the comment I'm, I'm putting into the lives. And if you email us, you know, we can give you that as well. But you should see it in your comments. And that will help you and everybody. Appreciate you. So, Krishid, I'm from Pakistan. I'm confused about the timing. And second thing is I'm a resident surgeon here. I might not be regular in taking classes. Do you think I shall take this course and it will help me out? couple things. So the timing for everybody, because we do have many different time zones, I want to help you. When you go to the course page, you see the description of the times. And then we have here, click here to see the current time zone in New York to schedule app appropriately. So we have that on the page. So you see the exact time in New York which is the time of the class. So you can tell the difference with your time zone. So the timing will be really clear. And if you can't make it, you still get my number in case you miss anything. But every class is recorded, uploaded, usually within just four hours. So you get the class right away after we launch it, you know, after we have it. So you can still follow through the recordings. And do you think I should take this course? It will help me out. I do. I do, right? I back it 100%. Take it. You feel uncomfortable. You know, let us know for a full refund. But as an adult professional, you're a surgeon, like so many of you, it's like, why not hire a professional so that you don't have to search for practice, search for training, wonder about this, find answers by yourself? It. I just think the busier you are, the more you're challenged, the more important it is to get the course. And, you know, you can trust us. We've been doing this for 18 years, 16 years, so we're not going anywhere. We'll make sure that, that you get what you need. And then any discount for us who've already have the Diamond course? Yes. So remember in your account, so for students who were in the previous Gold course, when you go into the Jumpstart January, you have your discount. And this just shows everybody, we always try to honor our continuing students. So the philosophy is it's always for you, the, the students who have taken before. So when you go to your diamond course and you click on it, you'll see gold course discount. So you click on that and you'll get your discount code because you already have the course. So that'll be fun and awesome. Appreciate you, yeah, yeah. If, I'm curious if you have any teacher training course. We're thinking, we're planning that later this year. A TOEFL training course for students who've passed the TOEFL 
and also teachers looking to teach students of the TOEFL because we have a lot of students and I can't always give them the personal attention. So that's coming. I mean, self-study course maybe is the diamond knuckle. Yeah, Joanne, the diamond course would be the course that we recommend if you want to have your own schedule without classes. And it's uh, less than half the investment. So if it's a financial concern, that can also be really helpful. Mooney, it's worth it. Appreciate you. High five. When will free classes be started? March 16th, uh, 10 a.m. next two weeks, Saturday, will be the next free class. And our free classes are regular. Like we offer them probably once to twice per month. Sometimes when we get busy, once every two months, but usually once per month. And that's just been ongoing for years. And Earlier in the recording, I showed where we have our database of all our previous lives for you to review. And as I said, organize so you, you study on your own, but still improve. Awesome, Krishid. Oh, Ragad, please, an espresso shot class for listening. Well, espresso shot classes were classes on specific TOEFL skills, but Ragad, this gold course, I think is really going to be satisfying for all the underlying skills. So, but I will keep that in mind. There's a desire for more training on the listening, the, the fundamental skills. So I will keep in mind an, an extra class, which you call espresso shot for listening training. Whew. High fives to everybody who listened from beginning to end. Please text me, me or not me. Who was here from the start of this class to this moment? I want to give you a super high five. Everybody, that concludes this. We had our free class training. Went so in-depth. We're going to continue it March 16th, Saturday, 10 a.m. We had our discussion, our invitation to the gold course, better than ever before. So if you're struggling, join, best I can say. And with that, I wish you success. More, more resources coming. We'll be here to help you until you succeed no matter what. And don't forget, Ahmed, I mean, it's you. And you can imagine when you pass how you're going to want to tell people it is possible. So send this picture to anyone who told you it is impossible, right? Anyone who doubts, right? Success, 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 and with amazing scores, if you can see it, 101 from a 65 on the TOEFL just a few weeks ago. So let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me give a lot of high fives here. Krishid, high five, beginning to end. Regard, of course, high five. Juwan, high five. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Sahar, Gina, Eslam, you, I apologize. I can't say your name. Kadosh, Krishid once more. Mina. See you soon, Ragad. Amanula, don't worry. Keep attending, reviewing the free courses. They're powerful there for you. Appreciate you, Mina. Dagme, high five. See you on Monday, Gina. Swathi, high five. Nayab, you're welcome. Hope it helped. And high five for being there to the end. All right, everybody. We're finished. Have a wonderful night. Well, I guess night for some of you, for us. Wonderful day, wonderful afternoon. Let's finish with Miss Frago. Your success is coming. Actually, almost Miss Frago. Let's finish with Ahmed's Ahmed's statement. You can do it. So have a wonderful day. Your success is coming. See many of you on Monday. Until then, or March 16th, 10 a.m. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.